It happened during a routine surgery. Um, I had been really sick for many, many years. I was hemorrhaging by this point from my monthly cycles. They couldn't do anything to help make it stop. I just would hemorrhage and hemorrhage and hemorrhage. And so again, it was a pretty routine surgery then to stop that. Now, leading up to that point, my body had been weakened uh, significantly. And what I learned in my NDE was that it had been weakened so much so that had I chosen to stay, it would have been like a flick of a switch and I would have been gone. So what happened for me was as I was being brought into the, the operating room, I remember this real sense of joy and excitement, which is really not common for me anyways. I've had a few surgeries and I'm not usually like hooting and hollering and excitement. But I remember when the doctor said that the anesthesiologist was going to put the gas on me. I remember I was like, all right, yeah. And I kind of remember observing myself thinking like, what? Are you crazy? You know, and I thought maybe I would have some really interesting astral travel or, you know, a spiritual understanding of sorts. I never expected to find myself on the other side. I have been to the doorway of the other side uh, with different souls, but I have never been able to be closer than three steps to that light. I've always been propelled backwards. In this case, I literally found myself on the other side and I knew exactly where I was. And I knew that that meant I was at a juncture point. And so when I found myself there, it was my grandmother, actually my Baba, who came to greet me. And I found I was walking on this most beautiful green grass, this grass that as I was walking and I could feel it under my feet, if I wanted to, I could zero in on the detail of it without having to bend down and look at it. I was just standing, but I could see it if I wanted to. And I also noticed the sky was this most beautiful summer blue, that bright, vibrant summer blue. And I walked towards this like summer barbecue type scene. And I started noticing that all the different people that were there were people that had been in my lifetime here who'd passed. Uh, my grandfather was there, different family members, friends, but also people or souls that I knew from lifetimes before. And I knew them as much as I would know anyone in my life here. It was like when you haven't seen friends for a while and then you meet up and you just start talking and you catch up right where you left off. It was like doing that with people from lifetimes before. I knew all of them and they had all gathered there to, to welcome me. And I, the hugs that I got on the other side were like, the closest thing that compares to these hugs is like when we hug a child and they're so happy to see us and they throw themselves in your arms. It was like those kinds of hugs. And my experience on the other side was only 20 minutes of our human time. But for me, the whole thing lasted like what felt like 24 hours. And so I spent hours and in, into the late evening with all of these beautiful souls and family members and friends. And we talked and we reminisced and we laughed and we caught up on all kinds of things. The joy and bliss that I felt there still can get me choked up. Um, it was like nothing else. It, it was not joy or bliss in excess. Sometimes on this planet, I think we think bliss means ecstatic states. It wasn't, it was, harmony it was balanced and that's what was so beautiful about it it was just joy and so after what felt like hours there my grandmother then took me to this next phase of my journey on the other side and we ended up in this room this white room with this giant boardroom table that was all white and my council was there my my ascended masters and council the people that the souls that help me in this lifetime that we all have, right? We all have a council. And I ended up there and outside the windows was like the farthest reaches of the universe and galaxies. And when I got there, the guide on my left rolled out this blueprint. And I was surprised to see a blueprint because it looked so much like a blueprint like we would see architects have. And I remember almost kind of like laughing because I was like, wow, this looks like a normal blueprint. But down the center of it was this uh, iridescent light that was moving back and forth and I could see that it was still alive. And what we did is we did this like life review of everything I had done up until that point. And we reviewed it 
And then it was at that point that spirit asked me if I wanted to stay or cross over fully. And I was like, what? And they were like, do you want to stay here? And I had full ability to stay in heaven, but none of it felt like pressure. None of it felt like I had to. There was no panic in that moment, but I had a knowing throughout my whole being of, yes, I want to go back. I have more I need to do. I had already invested so much time into this human life that I wanted to go back. And I realized the salt perspective of that in each and every struggle that I had had, how much I had gained and how much value that was, was so much a part of why I wanted to come back and keep going. And so they said, if you wanna go, go back, you can, but if you wanna stay, it is simple. Your body has been weakened to a point that we can basically flip a switch um, and you'll have a heart attack and you won't be revived. And I was like, wow. But I still was like, no, I wanna go back. I have things I need to do. I wanna be there for my kids and family. And I want to do more. And so it was at that point that they said, okay, since you're going to go back and do more with what's remaining of your life. And I, it was about this long. And I don't know how long that means. I don't know if this is reference of 30 years, 40 years, five years. I don't know. But what I was able to do was change out different juncture points. And this is when I really got the understanding of how much we do create our blueprint before we come in to this lifetime because here I was having this opportunity to reassess some things going forward. And so the first one that I pulled out, which they kind of looked like fuses in a fuse box along this iridescent line. The first one I pulled out was chronic health issues. And I remember pulling it out and being like, are you sure I can do this? And they're like, yes, because I had always been plagued with chronic health, health issues growing up. If if ever there was going to be somebody sick, it was going to be me. I was like that canary in a coal mine for my family. And so I remember pulling that out and putting it down and picking up one of health and wellness. And I remember looking around like, really, I can do this? And they were like, yes. So I put that one in and then I proceeded to change a couple more. But they said, they're like, you will remember this first one. We'll give you that memory, but you're not going to remember the next ones that you changed. And I was like, okay. And then they told me they're like several things will fall into place in rapid succession to get you on your path. And I said, okay. And that's when they asked me one more time, are you sure you want to go back? And my whole energy, my soul was like, absolutely, absolutely. I want to go back. And so it was at that moment that I could hear the nurse in recovery say, Jeanette, are you awake? And this all happened within seconds, split seconds, but I heard her say, Jeanette, are you awake? I felt my bot, my soul go whoom, back into my body. I could still feel and see my grandmother beside me, but I was back in my body now. And before I could even speak through consciousness, I felt my higher self come in and speak to the nurse. And again, she said, Jeanette, are you awake? And suddenly in such clarity and i'm not clear when i come out of surgery it's actually quite funny but in such clarity i said to the nurse i need you to write something down I still had my eyes closed i'm like i need you to write down these four phrases these four words um or statements and then i need you to fold up that paper and put it in my hand and she stopped what she was doing and she wrote down what i said and they're words that wouldn't really make sense to anybody um but they were important for me. And so she folded them up, put them in my hand. And I remember I held them right against my chest. And then she went on with what she was doing and gave me pain meds and all of that. And so by the time they wheeled me back into recovery, I'd given this paper to my mom and I said, don't lose this, I need this. And she was like, okay. And I remember I just had one eye open barely. And, uh, and it wasn't until the next day after, so maybe, so the next day and then maybe the day after, um, that I had no pain meds in my system because my soul knew that if I had pain meds, I would question the reality of what happened, which is why my higher self jumped in right away to tell the nurse what I needed. Because then what happened is once I was off pain meds, I felt this energy saying now is the time. And so I went and I grabbed that paper and I opened it and I read it. And my whole experience came flooding back to me in finite detail of everything, of the power to choose of rewriting the next phase of my journey, of the validity of what we do as souls before we come into this path. We literally sit with our counsel and we talk 
and we choose what are going to be the best lessons of what we need to do in this lifetime and what do we want to learn as a soul and it was just such an amazing experience on the other side to have the power to choose and then to also realize that our power to choose continues massively when we're back in human form because with the destinies that we created we call that destiny versus free will with the destinies we put in with the fuses and then our free will as human beings to choose what we're going to do based on every experience we have when we recognize those two things that we are constant constant creators and creating moments of learning we have the power to gain the most of our life experience and so that was one of the big messages that i really felt drawn to share and coming back and and when spirit said several things will happen in rapid succession to get you on your path it literally did it brought me to platforms of being able to share my story of writing my book of creating outlets for consciousness and so it it's just this beautiful experience that every time i tell the story i am filled again with the same awe and wonder and i remember i had someone ask me one time like do you get bored of telling the story or is it you know kind of tedious and i say absolutely not every time i get to share the story not only does it hopefully inspire other people to first of all know that we do carry on absolutely but secondly to know how much choice goes into our experiences on a soul level for our greatest growth but also in a human level in everything we choose to do as a result of what happens thanks for watching today's video please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel as it helps us get more of these stories out in this format for more interested viewers to watch this full unedited interview in its entirety visit the link in the description let us know what you think of today's videos in the comments and we'll see you on the next one.